Mercy Hospital Hot Springs has undergone a number of changes over its first 125 years. Two of the biggest involved moving into much bigger facilities. In 1927, the first million-dollar hospital in Arkansas history opened on Whittington in Hot Springs. And in 1991, the move was made across town to our current facility. In the 22 years since moving, the old Whittington Hospital has been utilized by the Arkansas School for Mathematics, Sciences, and the Arts. After they built new dorms, the old hospital now goes largely unused. We recently took a trip down memory lane and walked through our old facility with longtime co-workers Tammy Finney and Jack Swain. Even though they hadn't set foot inside the building in 22 years, they had no problems navigating and reminiscing about the places they saw. Brings back a lot of memories, lot of I memories. tell you. I mean, this was... Uh, this is where we started. Looks this a lot like it eat. used to, too. I mean, it's changed a little bit, not really all that much. I can still find my way around here. That was, uh, that was the ER. The ER right was there. down there. You have your admissions that was right here in the gift shop over here on the left. So the layout is still the same. Yeah. To just look at it and look at the structure itself the way it is, it's still intact. So as you could tell during that time they used good material. Yeah, it's very good foundation. Like I hear the voices. <laughs> Jack! <laughs> Jack get my office! Jack! Jack! When that sight patient jumped out off the seventh floor window, he landed right up here. Because the nurses hurt him when he hit the ground. It didn't, it didn't break a ball in his body. That's the one you better use. That's right. You could, we were not allowed to use these front elevators. You always had to use that elevator. No, you can't use that one. And if if she saw you and knew you worked here, even though you were coming to visit someone, she'd look at you and say, why are you using that elevator? <laughs> Kids. Yeah, this was a pharmacy for us. Oh, okay. this, this was uh, a lot of it was a business office. Mm -hmm. they come in here and ripped out all the walls. All the walls. They just opened this when I came to work here. In fact, when I came to work here, administration was on the first floor. First floor. And then they moved it to the second floor. Of the oh. station. I wash station. Yeah, we could use it. This was if they got contaminated stuff. That's what they used. This thing, it would, you would turn this valve, and it would, they would put these things like gargles over it, and just the eye part be out, and that's what they would use to wash the eyes out. <laughs> you have to have your flowers here. CCU. Got your seventies flowers. <laughs> just what you need. <laughs> the right decor. Yeah. No, it's basically the shape of the side. Mm -hmm. That, that was open all the way around. All the way around. Because you could go through here and go to the next unit. And planted over there just not far from the chapel. Right where my It was not some place you raised your voice. I mean, Very quiet. I mean, here a lot of times there would be nuns in here. They pray all hours of the day and night, you know. And so I had to come in here one time and finish all the pews. So that was very structured. There were just certain times of the day I could work in here. And, um, and of course, you, you walked in once and you walked out once because they didn't want a bunch of clamoring and banging mm -hmm. around. So sanded down those pews turned out to be quite an ordeal because they really didn't like the sound of the sander. So uh, basically what I did was hand sand all of them and then uh, refinished them one at a time. And uh, I mean, it was just something you, I guess you grew up with it. You, you, when you came in here, you, you knew not to make a lot of noise or draw attention to yourself. You know, it was just the way it was. This is a place that I came when I found out that my, my dad had passed. And one of the sisters, I think it was Humbling, came with me and she said, we're going to kneel down and we're going to pray. Talking about, the, or thinking about that time and thinking about how she stayed there with me, 
during that time. It kind of brings back a lot of memories, even though the windows have changed because they had the stained glass windows, but talk, but it's a beautiful sight, this area. Very peaceful. This is, this is the room Sister Warner lived in. You can see the hinges, each one of the rooms had a cabana door on it so that they could leave their doors open but still have some privacy. She, there was a sink. They all had exactly the same furniture. A bed, a desk, and a chair, solid maple. And when they left, they had me refinish all of them so they looked like new. And then they took them to Barling. But if you look out the window, she can see everybody. You can see the loading dock. And you see everybody walking up the street to come to work. It's really a, a prime room. Do it. Sister Mercy's room right there. They, they're the two that had dogs. They each had a Boston Terrier. And remember the other thing about the dog, at least eat me alive that morning. There's a nun who enjoyed them, you know, because they're. And, and the people that would come to the hospital, they would expect to see them. Because those yeah. were only two dogs that would You'd be see in the hospital. In the chapel, and, you know, they, they, mm -hmm. they had a run of the place out, outside out there, so. full-time job and uh, of course you know I, I don't expect didn't expect to somebody to maintain a shrine after I left but you know it's just uh, I don't know it's kind of hard but I understand the need we had to move on and move up we got a bigger facility nicer newer I mean that was that was the main goal to, to improve so we but did. to come back and see that the structure of the building and see that you can still recognize the areas and what was in those areas really makes you feel good. Say, so, well, I remember this and this. I was thinking about that last night. Am I going to be able to figure out, find my way around again? So yeah. I started ticking through my mind what was on what floor, you know. And then uh, I've kind of pieced most of it together. And last night I said, I'm going to go over there and be as lost right. as I can. To be honest, it really looks the same. Yeah. I mean, does. you can tell that the upkeep haven't been because they don't use this part of the facility. But to go back into it, the memories are great. Well, I can see I can see where they've added walls and stuff because it used to, you know, you had a pattern of how you got around the hospital. And a lot mm -hmm. of times they've added walls where you can't go that way. You have to go another way to get to where you want to go. So, but you know, I mean, it's a shame to know it's going to be torn down, but I think it's lived its life. So, so even back there, the physicians had a, a separate spot where they could take you and talk to you, but this was open. You just wasn't in with all the families, other families. This is the only time I got written up. It's over this room right here. I was supposed to do this at night. Take out all the ceiling tiles, paint the grid, you know, paint all the walls, put it all back for the next morning. So I said, you know, can I have some help to move all this furniture out? Yeah, sure. We'll get a housekeeping help. Okay. They never showed up. So I'm in there taking the ceiling tiles out, and I'm, I just thought they'd gotten started, you know. I start back in the far corner, and I turn around, and, you know, this room's kind of full of this misty paint that I've been spread. Tell them I'm humiliating myself. And so all the furniture's still there. So I go over there, and I start grabbing this furniture. I'm dragging it out here in the hallway. Well, this time, paint had settled all over, you know. So I go ahead, and it is about like midnight when I got done, so I threw it all back in there, went on home, come back in the next day, guess who's waiting on me? 
you messed up my furniture. So she proceeds to write me up. You know? It was just a big misunderstanding. Sister Warner had to go to court over this this addition over here because she made the contractor clean up every day because she didn't want debris and stuff blowing all over the grounds and stuff. So she made him so clean up, have a crew clean up every day. So at the end of the thing, he presents her with a big fat bill. They had to go to court to sort it out. I don't know if she ever paid it or not. This was the cafeteria. But it, it definitely didn't look like yeah. this. Okay. It was very dark. Brown. Not like this either. And smoky. Incinerator <laughs> messes up right there. But all this was added when they added the Pine Street. This is the red room. Yes, it is. We still call it still the red, call red room. room. Still red. call it the red room. Let's go to the red room, y'all. We got this is where they had uh, meetings for board offers, board, board meetings. meetings. Well, just for me, standing out in front of the, the hospital, the older hospital, you can see where we came from. Still have great memories from there, but then you also can see where we are today and what a difference is made in, in moving up and out and to better ourselves. It, it, it's kind of bittersweet. I, I, it brings back a lot of memories that I hadn't thought of in years when we walked through that. Uh, place, but uh, I don't know when you've dedicated yourself to a, not just a building but to an idea for 30 something years. You know, it's not necessarily the building I'm nostalgic about, but all the great people and all the great things we've done. Then it brought back memories I hadn't thought of in years. You really remember the things when you walk through because a lot of the walls are the same. And to go back in the surgery area and look and see where some of the physicians we currently have at the facility are there, it just makes you feel like, you know, we're still moving forward. And then there's great memories here, but you can still move on with the new things that we have. It kind of added some continuity to the whole, the whole situation. You know, I don't know how many more years I've got left with Mercy, but, uh, you know, I can see where we came from, and it's it's still a great heritage. You know? In 1991, we moved out and moved on to bigger and better things. Mercy Hospital Hot Springs not only includes a 282-bed hospital, but also the Heart and Vascular Center, Cancer Center, Women's Center, and numerous clinics throughout the area. The old hospital will also be moving on soon. Arkansas School for Mathematics, Sciences, and Arts has big plans for the land in their future. But no matter what structures are on the site, its history will still be around through the deeds of our co-workers. From St. Joseph's Infirmary in 1888, the Annex in 1903, St. Joseph's Hospital in 1927, and Mercy Hospital Hot Springs in 2013, our co-workers make a difference in our community.